<sighs> you know, I invite the snarky comments here because at first, if it were my favorite reviewer doing something like this when they haven't even touched a show in two years, it would be somewhat of a surprise. It's not even the, and, and here's a timestamp, you should click on that if you want. It's not even that the show gets me. It's the inevitable time I'm going to have to spend on this. It's a two part special and I'm gonna be diving into it only for people to talk about what's around the video and the subject of the video rather than what I said in the video itself. Let's talk about my second most popular video, L is for Love, it was a Loud House review. That episode revolved around Luna being bi or gay. It doesn't really matter, but the issue here is that the comments appeared to be more discussing LGBT relationships in the children's show rather than what I said in the review. Like any other point of the review, for more or less wasn't even discussed in the comments. I spent no more than a minute in the video talking about it, but that was the biggest talking point in the comments below. But it really pains me that I have the foresight to see that with this video, people who may have not have even seen the show have already formed their opinions on it, even though it's been out for a shorter time than one may have consumed the video. I've heard everything under the sun about the community when it revolves around MLP. Personally, I haven't seen anything too weird, nothing weirder than what a meme lord would do, but I get it. The show was on the hub back when it was the hub, and it appeared to be their figurehead show like Spongebob and Teen Titans Go. And there's no other way to put this, so sue me. MLP is societally a show that's seen for young girls. And I've been thinking about this for the longest, but take DC Superhero Girls, for example. I want to cover that show, or Winx Club, or even Miraculous Ladybug, which admittedly doesn't have as big of a stigma to it as the first three shows. I would not sigh in the beginning of this video. I think it'd be pretty fun, and I can make a great video out of it. But why do I have that apprehension with this show, opposed to, like, even the Powerpuff Girls? It's only this show. <sighs> and I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, this is a very weird show to cover. It seems that people who watch, watch your main three networks plus Netflix and whatnot, and they don't seem too welcoming to other shows for the most part. So to assure you've gotten at least this far and you've heard me out, in the comments below, I would like you to secretly, discreetly, put the word cat in your comments somehow, some way. Whether it's cat, feline, kitty, kitten, the cat emoji, spell it with a K, I don't care. This helps me separate who's most likely has heard me out to this point, and those who may not have listened closely, or to be fair, probably forgot and watched to the end of this video and forgot what I said here. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin. So here's how the story goes. There were two ponies, they created harmony. One raised the sun for the day and one raised the moon for night. The younger pony didn't like how ponies played and had fun and did everything during the day, so she vowed to make it night all the time, calling herself Nightmare Moon. Obviously not thinking that if it was night all the time, we would just stay indoors. But don't think about that. Obviously we can't have that, so the elder sister took on the responsibility for both the sun and moon by harnessing the power to banish the younger sister permanently on the moon. We have the main character, Twilight Sparkle, who here is studying up on this lore because, um... Anyway. Moon Dancer is having a little get together in the West Castle Courtyard. You wanna come? I got a lot of studying to catch up on. <laughs> Does that pony do anything except study? All right, so now that you understand that Twilight Sparkle is going to be more interested in studying than friends, let us continue to bring to you for the most part that Twilight Sparkle is going to be more interested in studying than friends. Oh, good thing there weren't stairs here or running up them would take a longer period of time. Spike! Spike! Spike? Ooh, uh, yeah, yeesh, um... Yeah, that's pretty bad. He's, oh yeah, he's already bleeding. Oh, I, I wonder if there's cracks in his skull. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a, a major concussion. Uh, yeah. You're, go you're going to be going to jail for a long time, Twilight. So rather seeing if Spike is okay, she just wants to know more about the elements of Harmony. Opting out of Moondancer's event despite being on break. She's persistent in fighting whatever this is, which does give her character those main character s traits that we often see in cartoons. Never giving up is a trait in a lot of main characters. Also, the slapstick is fine. It doesn't appear that the show wants to really test how far it can go with it. So from my highly educated understanding, her horn has telekinesis, which allows her to move items without physically touching them. Now while that's pretty cool and I hope it comes back many times throughout the story, we'll discuss more on that later. While flipping through this pictureless book, the page with colors and photos appears to be the answer she looks for. Elements of harmony. See Mare in the Moon? Mare in the Moon? But 
that's just an old pony's tail. The Mare and the Moon, myth from olden pony times. Legend has it that on the longest day of the thousandth year, the stars will aid in her escape, and she will bring about nighttime eternal. Uh, okay. Now let's suspend our disbelief and not use any outside sources or future episodes to make this answer. Suppose this mare of the pony happens to fall aligned with the nightmare moon pony, who happens to be the sister of the uh, elder sister. Then to the best of your knowledge, who would you assume? Who would you predict? Who would you estimate? Who would you guess this princess to be? Would you assume this princess is another character we haven't seen yet? Or would you assume that this princess, who Twilight Sparkle knows, is said elder sister? Who would know of Nightmare Moon? who seems to be very similar to this Mayor of the Moon. If you said A, an off-screen character, well, it makes a lot of sense because if it is B, then Twilight Sparkle is pretty much made to be an idiot. If the elder sister is her teacher, then wouldn't she be able to knock out this supposed long rumor? Now you could say, but Jay, maybe she doesn't know that her teacher is the elder sister. Maybe she hasn't met this elder sister before. Maybe the princess and the elder sister are two different people. Maybe you aren't supposed to think about this teacher princess until she's on camera. Fine. But I will put a pin in this and I'll come back later to tell you if A or B is correct. I do want to acknowledge I do enjoy the subtle way that Nightmare Moon appears in the hourglass. Little things like that I only saw in my second or third viewing so I definitely appreciate it. So Twilight has the fear that on the longest day of the thousandth year something bad will happen as legend has it. Now because Sparkle says that Princess Celestia has never doubted her, Princess Celestia doubts her. I see MOP has gone to a certain school of it and then the opposite happens. Princess Celestia doubts her and sends her to supervise the preparations in this year's location, Ponyville. Now just in case you forgot, Twilight Sparkle is going to be more interested in studying than friends. Just in case you forgot. I have an even more essential task for you to complete. Make some friends! Aww. I'll check on the preparations as fast as I can, then get to the library to find some proof of Nightmare Moon's return. Then when will you make friends like the princess said? She said to check on preparations. I am her student and I'll do my royal duty, but the fate of Equestria does not rest on me making friends. Actually, um, the fate of your trust in Princess Celestia does rest on you making friends considering yes, it was a task. Spike read the letter presumably word for word. Now for a first story, the main character should be very different and for what this episode and show appears to want to do, it has the main character slowly form into what they will be today. So besides the small rifts I have here and there, this is fine. She wants to study and not make friends. I don't know if you heard me say that before or not. And if you watch any show, literally any show, where the main character is alone at first and meets people along the way, you can make a very easy prediction that she will make friends. Now, does this episode make what they pretty much spoiled in the beginning interesting? Well, we'll be the judge of that. Come on, Twilight, just try! Uh, hello? <laughs> This is like the an introvert's worst nightmare. To have walked up to someone for a conversation and then they just gasp and run away. You just go back home and you think about what what have you done? Was this something, was this your fault? Yeah, this was terrible, but it was funny. My name is Twilight Sparkle. Well, how to do, Miss Twilight? A pleasure making your acquaintance. I'm Applejack. We here at Sweet Apple Acres sure do like making new friends. What can I do you for? <laughs> so as you can see, this is Applejack, and she's actually a pretty good character within this first special episode. She exhibits hospitality, honesty, and trustworthiness. Now yes, her character so far appears to be a southern, hospitable, hardworking person who doesn't understand them, their metaphors, or complicated matters that y'all city folk have. But a cartoon without any tropes or cliches would look really weird, or possibly not exist, because I can't really imagine it. So the story of this is, she wants to go and do all of the supervision in Ponyville as quickly as possible and all of her future friends make it harder for her and thus take up more of her time. There's supposed to be a Pegasus pony named Rainbow Dash clearing the clouds. <laughs> uh, excuse me? No, no, don't thank me. You're quite welcome. <laughs> Let me guess, 
your Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash is also okay. She gets the point across that she's hyper and has a lot of pride about herself and her abilities. I did think it was clever to have Twilight play up her abilities as a test and somewhat trick her into doing the work as fast as she possibly could. And it was also neat to foreshadow that Rainbow Dash would love to be a part of the Thunderbolts, as this is what pushes her to be the best flyer that she can be. It gives her a story like the story we've seen behind Applejack. Also, the way that they have Twilight's main mess up to fit into the next part of the story really gives the story the binds it needs to feel natural. No, no, no. Oh, goodness, no. How can I help you? <laughs> oh, my stars, darling. Whatever happened to your coiffure? I'm just here to check on the decorations and then I'll be out of your hair. Out of my hair? What about your hair? Wait, where are we going? I also enjoy Rarity as a character so far. She feels natural within the story and I can see a lot of people upon first watching being either a Rainbow Dash, Rarity, or even later on Pinkie Pie favorite. The way that she's very proper and takes appearances very seriously does distinguish her from Applejack and Rainbow Dash. In fact, with each of these characters, you couldn't really mistake them. And I guess that's pretty standard for shows where you have a lot of main characters like The Loud House, like Rise of TMNT. Should be noted that Spike really likes Rarity and wants to get all up in that Quafure. But as I said before, the story here is Rainbow Dash wants to do all of the supervisions as quickly as possible and her future friends make it harder for her by taking up more of her time. They all follow the pattern of each of them wanting to be really good friends with Twilight. Now because she's so smart, she doesn't take this opportunity to easily finish this task without any effort on her part so she can get to the library. I mean, why finish a task that has been finished for you? Why not become friends with people who already want to be friends with you so you can finish the easily done task. But I guess you're just smart enough to create more work for yourself by refusing it, right? Hello! Oh my, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to frighten your birds. I'm just here to check up on the music and it's sounding beautiful. I'm Twilight Sparkle. What's your name? Um, I'm Fluttershine. Didn't quite catch that. Now Fluttershy is a pretty special case. She doesn't say much, but I understand pretty much all that I need to know about her for now. I do know that her shyness will come up, and I hope the whole bashfulness doesn't become annoying, but for the most part, she's also fine. She takes a great liking to Spike because he's a baby dragon, but the story here is that Twilight Sparkle wants to finish up supervising as quickly as possible, and her future friends make it harder for her by taking up more of her time. So as you can see, it's pretty much the same thing, but in this case, this time they have Spike feeding his own ego, but I can't lie if someone were to be so excited to see a talking panda on YouTube and they wanted to hear their entire history. I mean, I would also tell them everything that I remember before someone dragged me away. Well, good night. I have to convince the princess that Nightmare Moon is coming and we're running out of time. I just need to be alone so I can study without a bunch of crazy ponies trying to make friends all the time. Now, where's the light? Surprise! Oh no, they're gonna rip you to shreds and feed your baby dragon to the buzzards because you called them crazy and disapproved of them. Well, actually, they do absolutely nothing. I wouldn't be surprised if they couldn't hear her because it was too dark. Twilight pours hot sauce into a cup and drinks it because, because. Now, I will attempt to explain this next scene. Twilight wants sleep. Spike says that Twilight should join the party. She doesn't want to. She says ponies are crazy. Spike clearly says that ponies must stay up and that they're playing pin the tail on the pony. She continues to deny and complains to herself, then looks up at the moon, and Spike comes back to say that it's time to watch the sunrise. That must have been the shortest game of pin the tail on the pony ever. But really, the way that the scene was built up, either it had a lot of flaws or maybe it cut some stuff out because it doesn't look like it logically makes sense within the story. But anyway, as all the ponies come together, is the legend true? Will Nightmare Moon co- Wait a minute. One, two, three, four. Oh, I forgot about a pony. Oh, Pinkie Pie. Yes! I'm excited. I've never been so excited. Well, except for the time that I saw you walking into town and I went, <gasps> but I mean, really, who can top that? Yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know. Anyway, is the legend true? Will Nightmare Moon or Nightmare Mare, Mare of the Moon, the Keeper of the Reaper, will this winged horse come back? We see some stars move towards the moon. Oh man, it appears that we may see Nightmare Moon. What will happen? It is my great honor to introduce to you the ruler of our land, the very pony who gives us the sun and the moon each and every day, Princess Celestia! Wait, 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 wait. In the beginning of the episode, you sent a letter to Princess Celestia about how you feel like on the longest day of the thousandth year, Nightmare Moon is said to have come back and she tells you nothing? So today I learned that I hate Princess Celestia. Oh no! 
Nightmare Moon. <sighs> oh no, and Nightmare Moon is here. What will happen? You know, now that I think about it, this episode never really made it clear why nighttime would be such a bad thing. Unless there's something a little PG-13 that I don't know about Ponyville. Or would it be rated R? Anyway, so Twilight puts Spike to sleep and desperately, frantically tries to find a solution to the problem. Rainbow Dash, needing something to fight or at least confront, approaches Twilight in a very aggressive way. And I know this is probably looking deeply into it, but I find it extremely convenient that the five ponies she met are the five ponies who seem to know what's going on. It's almost like a, a story or something, a cliche story. Now, as Twilight reads out the different elements of harmony, they conveniently do it in the order of what it will be because, I don't know, layers or something. There are six elements of harmony, but only five are known. Kindness, laughter, generosity, honesty, and loyalty. The sixth is a complete mystery. But the most important thing here to note is that this purplish aura represents Nightmare Moon listening in on the conversation to beat them to the elements that kept her banished on the moon. They get to the evergreen forest and we actually get some neat character development. And uh, um, <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to just say what's going on in the most flat way possible. There's really no interesting way to put this. So because of the different types of elements of harmony, and because there's just the amount of elements of harmony as there are ponies, they all just conveniently match up to each other. Folks say it don't work the same as Equestria. What's that supposed to mean? Ah! Fluttershy, quick! Jack, what do I do? Let go. Are you crazy? No, I ain't. I promise you'll be safe. That's not true. Now listen here. What I'm saying to you is the honest truth. Let go and you'll be safe. Okay, Applejack is honest, so when she says her honest truth, this proves her honesty. They meet this lie, oh, I mean, a, a manticore. Fluttershy is kind, so when she's kind to the lion, this proves her kindness. It's like those opening scenes of Hilda, really. I'm sure you've seen this in many other shows as well. Pinkie Pie laughs, so when she shares the gift of laughter, this proves her laughter. And no, I am not going to change the sentence. I'm going to copy and paste it like how they copied and pasted this structure. Rarity slashes her tail to give to a flamboyant dragon. So when she shows our generosity, this proves our generosity. The dragon was the best non-major character in this, however. He was amazing, he should have his own spin-off show, period. We want you to join us, the Shadow Bolts. We are the greatest aerial team in the Everfree Forest. We need you. Woohoo! Sign me up! Just let me tie this bridge real quick, and then we have a deal. No! It's them or us. Thank you. For the offer, I mean. But I'm afraid I have to say no. I know they needed Rainbow Dash to be tempted with her dream and rejected over her friends to show loyalty, so when she shows loyalty, this proves her loyalty. But couldn't Twilight Sparkle just use her powers to pull the bridge up? They get to the castle and they find the five elements, but where will the six be? Unfortunately, they meet up face to face with Nightmare Moon, who, like I said earlier, was listening to their conversation. Not sure why she tried to stop the ponies at every path rather than going towards the end where she knew where they were and just breaking the elements, but uh, what do I know? But if she knew, she must be a great actor because she seems very surprised that these rocks here that she thinks are the elements of harmony start to spark. She also then stopped Twilight's friends from coming up the stairs or wherever they were. So I don't even know what's going on in her head, but anyway. Anyway. You think you can destroy the elements of harmony just like that? Well, you're wrong, because the spirits of the elements of harmony are right here! The spirits of these five ponies got us through every challenge you threw at us! You still don't have the sixth element! The spark didn't work! But it did. I felt it the very moment I realized how happy I was to hear you. When I realized that you all are my friends! Oh, 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 friendship is magic. Oh, okay, I understand. I thought the sixth element would be friendship, but I, I guess all of those elements go into friendship. Twilight Sparkle, my faithful student. You told me it was all an old ponytail. No, Spike said that. Mirror in the moon? 
But that's just an old pony's tail. It was all Home Alone, by the way. But I kind of understand now. You misled Twilight into thinking that this task of friendship was for a distraction, when in reality, she actually needed to make you friends for this to work. You're still a jerk, though. Why not just say that the elements of harmony involves you having true friendships? Either way, they came to Twilight despite Twilight being dismissive of her intentions. They become friends with Twilight long before this. So they end with the elder and younger sister ruling together. Twilight is allowed to stay and study the magic of friendship. And it starts a wacky and colorful adventure full of ponies, magic, and the hub dying. And that was Friendship is Magic. So did MLP start off well? Sure, it's fine. I like it. I don't know how much of it I'm going to be covering, considering that I also have to cover every other cartoon in the universe, but it's fine. It's okay. Anyway, let me know what you think of this episode in the comments down below. Have you seen the show before? Is this review going to be the spark into you watching the show? I'd like to know all in the comments down below. Special thanks to the patrons of December, and until next time, take care. Alpha out.